China is the world's largest electric vehicle market by a large margin and home to the world's second largest EV producer behind Tesla, BYD. It accounted for 6 million of the 9.8 million electric vehicle sales so far this year as of August, according to Rowmotion. No other country comes close. Just under two in every three EVs sold globally um, is sold in China. We do expect this to continue through to 2040, so China will remain the largest market and the most important market. In July, sales of passenger electric vehicles in China, including plug-in hybrids, counted for 54% of sales, the first time they became a majority of the world's largest car market. And in August, sales passed the 1 million mark for the first time. In many ways, cheaper Chinese EVs are just what Europe and the US need to help drive mass market adoption. Let's not forget that the most significant part of the challenge for the EV revolution has always been, um, some would argue still is, price. It's about the investment in upstream, in the supply chain. So you get economy of scale, um, and with economy of scale, you get the opportunity, if you add to that vertical integration, to make uh, your product highly competitive while still making a margin. But politicians fear that an influx of Chinese EVs could decimate their home producers. This year, the administration of President Joe Biden launched 100% tariffs on Chinese EVs, and the European Union has voted to impose tariffs as high as 45% on EVs imported from China after a months-long investigation into how China subsidizes the industry. The 2023 Shanghai Auto Show, the first since COVID restrictions were eased, was the first time the world got a taste of how far Chinese electric vehicle companies had come. The Shanghai Show just shocked everybody how far and fast the Chinese technology, electric vehicle technology had come along. Quality of the vehicles just inherently in terms of fit, finish, just the, the basic principle of how do you put a vehicle together. Um, but I think equally now, what people are seeing, which I think is even more of a surprise, is that ubiquitous connectivity that the vehicles have got, that really, you know, top of the line ability to uh, work with people in the, in the modern world, the connected world. Thanks to investment in cheaper lithium ion phosphate batteries, battery materials and critical mineral processing, Chinese companies have significantly lowered the cost of EVs. More than 99% of global LFP cell production is expected to come from China this year, according to Benchmark's lithium-ion battery database. And average prices for lithium-ion phosphate cells have fallen from around $100 per kilowatt hour in December 2022 to $65 per kilowatt hour today. China has a very good vertically integrated supply chain. Um, it's a market with the highest share of LFP. It's something like 60% of the, the sales um, unit sales of electric cars are, are LFP in China and LFP is one of the, the lowest cost chemistries and the supply of LFP comes from China um, so I think leaning into that local supply chain is a, is a really important key issue. The cost of many electric vehicles in China today has reached parity with internal combustion engine cars and in many cases they are cheaper. Within China these vehicles are fundamentally cheaper so if you were to compare a D-segment vehicle in Europe versus a D-segment vehicle in China, you're looking at about half the price. And the other key thing is, of course, around that kind of price disparity between BEV and ICE vehicles. And in China, we start to see that gap closing. And certainly for some segments, it's now cheaper to buy a BEV than equivalent ICE. And what that means is that when we do a sales weighted average of the top 10 selling BEV and ICE vehicles, kind of on a monthly basis, we do this. And for in, within China, you're looking at now 16% cheaper for a BEV compared to an ICE vehicle within this kind of metric. Whereas in the US market, you're looking at about 50% more expensive and in Europe it's even more, so look around kind of 60% more expensive. While hardly any Chinese EVs are exported to the US, Europe is another matter since the lion's share of China's electric vehicle exports are to Europe. We don't see many Chinese EVs sold in the US right now, um, so it's not gonna have that much impact. In Europe, it's a really quite a different story. So in the first half of the year, um, over a quarter of BEVs sold in Europe were manufactured in China. So it's already a, a large part of, of that European electric vehicle market. The key thing though, when it comes to these level of tariffs is, you know, we go back to that point I made earlier around um, the price of an EV in China compared to the price uh, in the European market. You're looking at kind of half for some vehicle segments, even if with that level of tariff that you bring through,
it's still very easy for these Chinese OEMs to kind of absorb some of that um, and still sell into the market with kind of limited impact on, on the consumer and the list price. Um, so yeah, certainly not blocking the market. You know, Europe has strong ambitions around electrification. And I think it's, uh, it's a well-known fact from European OEMs and, and also policymakers that Chinese vehicles will be part of that picture. In the UK, where there are no tariffs, Chinese electric vehicles are quite common, from MG cars to Polestar vehicles. MG became part of state-owned carmaker Syke in 2007, while China's Geely, led by Li Shufu, also acquired sports carmaker Lotus in 2017. Since taking over Lotus in 2017, China's Geely has said that all models will now be electric by 2028. While the existing petrol Lotus is made in the UK, this electric vehicle I'm sitting in is made in Wuhan, China. Chinese EVs are likely to still be successful in wider Europe despite the EU tariffs due to their cost competitiveness. The reality is that it is too late for Europe to completely ban Chinese electric vehicles. Because they've got such a cost advantage, even with the tariff on it, they can probably bite the bullet and bring the product in and just make, you know, considerably less margin than they're making in China. In addition, Chinese companies such as Geely already own European brands such as Polestar and Volvo, and European car makers still sell considerable electric vehicles into China's home market, making them reluctant to support greater tariffs. Chinese companies are making significant supply chain investments in Hungary and countries with European free trade agreements like Morocco, and Chinese OEMs are investing in overseas production sites with BYD saying in July it would build a 1 billion plant in Turkey. Most people may not care too much about where their electric vehicle comes from and whether it's Chinese or not. The problem is, is that electric vehicles have become part of a growing strategic and geopolitical competition between the West and China. And many in the West accuse China of unfairly subsidizing their electric vehicle and battery industry and selling these products on global markets. The question now is, how do Western governments protect their own industries while not delaying the transition towards clean energy?